Welcome everybody to the American Space Museum. I'm Mark Marquette and we're so glad you're here to stay curious with Triple T. Travis Thompson, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. Loving it here. Well, good. We're glad to have you back. Travis was the close astronaut closeout crew lead uh, uh, for 30 years or over 20 years. He was up there in the white room putting yep. the astronauts in their seats. And we're going to talk about something different today with Triple T, and that's getting them off of the shuttle when they landed at Kennedy Space Center. Right. As today we celebrate uh, in 1995, the landing of STS-73 with seven astronauts. And right. we've got some pictures to share with that, including one from one of our Stay Curious fans, Tom Usiak, who's out there on the runway to take a picture. And I think, how cool is that? Because Tom yeah. was at the Smithsonian yeah. to get your picture in there and hear, uh, you know, your star crossed uh, yeah. uh, 35 years later, 30 years later. So I really like their work too, both brothers. We're like glad them. you're all with us today. Marty Winkle is running the controls. Jessica Galloway got a little sprained ankle. Jessica, get well out there. She helped us get this going from remote. As you know, Marty and I have been doing this since March, 2020. And Marty, we've got some guests here in the museum. If you spin the camera around there off our green screen over there, we have got, uh, uh, there he's moving around there. There we've got uh, Tom uh, Tom uh, Izzo, Wave Tom is our docent. He's back in town. There's Gene Steve. Wright. And a little further there, there you got in red is Jack and Rob. And they are, they are journalists from Europe, the Netherlands. Yeah, awesome. And they're here to do the launch of Crew 3. So glad to have you all here today. Yeah. They're Stay Curious fans. Of course, Gene is the so sister that we've had on yeah. many times. Look how smooth Marty did. Yeah, that. that was pretty cool. Yeah. I'm all right, impressed. buddy. We're getting, we're getting this thing down. Oorah. Teaching old dogs new tricks. <laughs> yeah, hoorah. He did that for the Marines there. But uh, our friends from the Netherlands have been here before. Jack has actually given us uh, patches from the Russian crew missions that oh, are in awesome. our display out there. Yeah. In our International Space Station gallery uh, 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 display out there. We thank you that. And they said that they got special visa exemption to come over here for the crew, uh, three launch because there's a, a German ESA astronaut right, aboard there. Right. And, uh, they were telling us and you, you and me all about getting a special visa because international travel is not allowed. They've had their, their COVID shots, but they said they're experiencing a spike in the Netherlands in your oh, COVID situation there. And we don't want to see that good. just as things have gotten open here in the museum and everywhere across yeah. America. Uh, but great, great to have you guys here. And we're going to post a picture of them in our uh, workers gallery. After cool. Stay curious there. So, awesome. Uh, but uh, love them being here and interject any questions you might have for Triple T. Because mm -hmm. we're going to kick off today's program with uh, some birthdays as usual. Happy birthday. We love our shuttle astronauts there, guys, and none other than our birthday ones. And we have got a special birthday to, uh, uh, um, let me get my notes, Senker. I think it's Rob Senker. And, yes, there are four astronauts born on November 5th, okay? And uh, the first one is Bob Senker, is 73. He was born November 5th, 1948, and raised in Melanin Township, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Not sure where that is to the Usiak brothers there in Lancaster. <laughs> Men, Men, Men Allen Township. Hmm. He was a payload specialist and one of the early shuttle launches, 61C, the final mission before the shuttle, shuttle disaster. Right. <clears throat> he would have flown more, obviously, had it not been for that. Another birthday, somebody that you remember. Charles Scorch, Scorch. Hobart, yeah, he was cool. Was born in 1961 on this date in Bar Harbor, Maine. He grew up, however, in North Ridgeville, Ohio, a suburb of uh, Cleveland area. Navy Academy flew yeah. three shuttle missions. He was a pilot twice on STS-104 and 118, and then 129. He was the commander with 36 days in space, and he was the Capcom on the 1 OS mission. Uh, Columbia, he spoke to, he was doing yeah, the comm did. check and That's not getting right. anything back. And, uh, right. obviously within a few seconds, yeah, he, he knew was something wasn't right there. Capcom on the fatal, that makes the hair rise on yeah, my arms. I forgot T, that. Uh, on there. So what do you know about, uh. Uh, Hobar Sam. Actually, there. that's an astronaut right there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, he, he there was no chiseled. doubt. He looks like a chiseled. Oh, uh, he was. Yeah, he and and when you got people like that, you watch your P's and Q's. Do you, you know? know? Yeah. So because you don't want to be the one to 
you know, screw something up. He's got all that military training too. He yeah. don't take no nonsense. I always, uh, you know, I, I tried to get in the military. I had asthma and they wouldn't take me. I wanted to go, but, uh, I decided NASA, <laughs> you know, so I, that was my career, but yeah. I've always really respected, uh, the workers and I like working with them because, uh, the military, they, I just, they're cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's a good one, and he's involved in the space program. Then final birthday, not final, but the birthday today of uh, Alvin Drew. Drew. Uh, ben Alvin Drew, born November 5th, 1962 in Washington, D.C. Yeah. Grew up in Brooklyn. Uh, second lieutenant in the U.S. Air Force. The last African-American to go to space on STS-133 until we had Victor Glover go up on the crew uh, right. uh, one. Uh, and uh, so... Uh, and uh, he had two flights. His first was STS-118. He did two spacewalks and was the 200th person to do a spacewalk. Awesome. I'd love to meet him. He yeah. seems like a likable guy. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, uh, always on. And, and uh, then uh, on a sad note, uh, this would have been the birthday of Alan Poindexter, who tragically died in uh, a jet ski accident at age 51. He would have been 60 years old today. Wow. And I know that hurts for you. Yeah. Because tell us about your relationship with uh, Alan Poindexter. He's he's the one that got my uniform in the Smithsonian. Because he was over the, uh, uh, the, the putting the bird in there, right? <clears throat> yeah, he was over yeah. putting the bird in. He told me yeah. to go out in my car. He said, Don't, you got your suit with you? And I said, yes, sir. And he said, go out and get it. <laughs> really yeah so one day i remember uh we were in houston training and you know he was a pilot he was in service so we're standing there against this wall one day and uh, all the mission specialists astronauts are over there and alan tells me he goes you know what those are the real astronauts i said in my head i'm thinking you're the biggest astronaut i know you know yeah and he says, uh, I, I just fly them up there and bring them home. That's my job. He says, these guys volunteer to go. He said, they're the real astronauts. Huh. So I thought that was a pretty cool perspective <clears throat> coming from the astronaut. You know, to well, me. Well, I'd love to tribute. Uh, he was born in Pasadena, California, grew up in Rockville, Maryland, though. Yeah. And, uh, but he went to high school in Coronado, California. Uh, Georgia Tech, a lot of good astronauts come out of Georgia Tech including our Orlando's native, John Young. John Young. And uh, uh, your buddy, Box Johnson, yeah. wrote on Twitter after his death, he was a talented, courageous Navy veteran with gifts. Mm. Dex was a lovable guy with a strong work ethic. And uh, yeah. uh, so gone way too soon, very tragic jet ski yeah. accident. Nine years ago, claimed the life of Dex. Uh, I went to... Uh, uh, Alan Poindexter I went, would have been born. He would have been sixty years old today. What, what's the uh, the graveyard? Oh, we went. Yes, we tried to find. Thank you. Uh, we tried to find yeah. his uh, tombstone at the Arlington Cemetery. And I did get to go at one time. I found it, and I just tapped my ring on it. And yeah. Talked to him. So. Yes, uh, when we went to Arlington Cemetery, I underestimated how big that was and, and oh, what a mass Lord. thing. We, we couldn't been, find it. We'll yeah. spend the whole day there next time we go there yeah. uh, with Marty and definitely go to the, the Marine Museum, I wanted to go too. to the Marine. Yeah, I wanted <laughs> yeah. to go there. Marty's shaking his head there. Heck yeah, heck yeah. Well, Marty's behind the controls today on this episode of Stay Curious. We've come a long way, Marty and I, in the year and a half. We didn't have you on board uh, in, yeah. until about a year ago. and. Uh, Jessica Galloway's helped us take this program looking like a TV show, and uh, we're grateful that we can pull it off here a little yeah. bit, a couple old dudes, right? What else we got going on today is, um, uh, oh, yes, okay, what I wanted to bring up today was uh, uh, to talk to Triple T about is his experience of STS-73 landed on November 5th, 1995, okay, and this was the crew on their seventh attempt to launch. Right. Six scrubs, okay. And this is Ken Bauer Sox leading him out. He's known as Sox. His third flight, I think he had at least four. Ken Rominger, his first of uh, four or five flights. Uh, he was a commander later on. Kathy Thornton, yeah. he's got big smiles there. She's been a museum friend of ours. Michael Lopez Allegra, Fred Leslie, Leslie and Albert Sacco. Uh, who uh, were the crew members there. 
And uh, Triple T, tell us a little bit about, I'm going to set it up by saying that this was supposed to launch October or on, on uh, September 25th. 1995 right and it scrubbed because a hydrogen leak was detected in the main engine number one well that was replaced at the pad all right 10 days later on october 5th they canceled it because of hurricane opal the next day on october 6th it was scrubbed uh because fluid had been inadvertently drained from the hydraulic fuel system uh, uh following the replacement of main engine number one valve all right the next day, it was scrubbed three days in a row. The 5th, 6th, 7th, it scrubbed in a row at T minus 20 seconds. Oh, yeah. Master Events Controller failed. The MEC failed. Right. Then October 15th, it was rescheduled, postponed at five minutes for low clouds, and then um, finally launched on the 20th. Was this like uh, 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 Bill Murray's uh, uh, Groundhog Day? <laughs> Groundhog Day, yeah. Three days in a row, you see the same I crew know. go up and go through the same routine, which you have to keep your excellence oh, the yeah. whole time, right? You got it's... Tell us a little bit about that experience with this crew, getting them off ground. Well, uh, I still have the hat, by the way. Uh, That's the rally hat. Yeah, right? the rally hat. But uh, socks uh was marine i think i've mentioned this before he did not want a lumbar pad to get, make you comfortable in the seat he okay. was a marine he went four hours without it one day sitting uh, in the bird four hours too. yeah and, and it's up to the commander on launch day if they go over four hours they have to ask the commander the commander takes a poll of the crew and they decide yeah we'll try it you know in case they have a chance to launch so and they're waiting on the weather hold yeah basically. waiting on the weather yeah. yeah but but every day back and forth doing the same thing over and over but they have good spirits because they're hoping ever hopeful that they're going to get to go in another hour you know but, you can kind of tell it in this picture here yeah. kind of like all right look at kathy there yeah, she's, she's so beautiful happy. and the smile it's like all right we're going to do this again yeah. let's go see triple t and his crew yeah. up there but i mean you, you had to act like it was the first time every time, correct? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, And you get, you know, but everything, you know, we had checklists. I had to do, you know, just because we did it yesterday, I got right. to do it again. And that was so hard. You got to think about the guys that the suit techs, they had to go back and prep everything and clean it and get it ready for O Dark 100 in the morning whenever. Oh, my you gosh. Know. So yeah. there was a lot of work involved with this. Uh, not just... It was uh, 9.53 a.m., so yeah. 10 o'clock in the morning launch. So on I'm October sure 20th. we were in at O 400 somewhere in there. Oh, this was a long mission. This was one of the longest missions of the shuttle, almost 16 days. All yeah. Right? Uh, I think it's the second longest. And, of course, it was Orbiter Columbia. And... Um, they had the microgravity lab on there, which is a big experiment package in the payload bay. Right. Second flight of that. So it was a big, big mission on, on fluid physics and materials and combustion science and stuff like that. But well, what we've talked to Triple T about before is he not only helps with the launches and, of course, all the training before the launches, but after the launches when they land. By yeah. the way, I wanted to show you this beautiful picture of finally the liftoff. Yeah. <laughs> That's one of the classic launch photos you'll see printed like around that. and that's sts 73 uh, uh beautiful that's columbia pretty. going up uh in space and um then it disappeared in the clouds and it did disappear <laughs> in the clouds huh this was columbia's 18th flight the 17th shuttle mission this mission tied uh sts 61c with the most scrubs okay is, <laughs> is that is that the one that not uh, a good record uh, is that the one that uh Sinker was on 61c uh I think so. yeah 61c I think so. how strange is that his birthday yeah. was on the uh the tide for that that was the one before uh cool. the Sh challenger disaster um this was the 26th landing what we want to talk about with triple t is the landings because you had something to do with the landings yeah. as part of the closeout crew you were the guys that made sure to get them out of the spacecraft, yeah. okay? And to get them out. Uh, this was the 26th landing at Kenny Space Center. It was at 6.45 a.m., all right, on November 5th, 1995. And um, uh, it ended in a 15-day, uh, 21-hour, 52-minute mission. 
Now, who's the brave person that's going to open up that door and take the first smells out of there? I learned you a long time ago, turn your head. <laughs> that's what... It smells like a bag of armpits in there. It smells like a bag of armpits <laughs> in there after 15 days. I imagine, yeah. okay. Turn your head and, hold your and, breath. And uh, believe me, I've met a few astronauts, and, and they, you know, they're not inhibited by much. Mm -mm. Uh, uh, what they have to go through with uh, uh, their bodies in space in front of their other crewmates and so forth. But uh, well, we got some pretty pictures here to show what did you do out there, Travis. And right. here's a cool picture uh, that I've never seen before. Oh, isn't that cool? Uh, you could even be in that crew. What's going I on here? And, and tell us about it. Well, it's the convoy. They're getting staged, and the shuttle's coming in. They're already pointed in the right direction. Uh, that yeah. They need to go. But... Uh, that's con that's everybody staging, and I'll tell you what, there's no better sound than hearing that boom, boom of those, you know, re-entering. Right. Oh, once you hear that, you know it's showtime. You got to go to work. But that what was pretty a, what cool. What an extraordinary photo, huh? I might you know, be in is, there. You is, never is that know. Uh, your uh, uh, the big uh, uh, one of them box trucks it, there? That you're... looks to me like it is the escape van. Okay. Yeah, it looks like escape van because of those steps. And you've got. Uh, uh, several hundred people out there this is a, yeah. a big deal and yeah you, you probably drive your own personal yeah. vehicles out there I well you drive them to the uh the building there there's a parking lot and then you go through your only flight vehicles so you got you medical know. people and oh, look yeah. at the other pictures i want you to emphasize how this is a living breathing oh man still spacecraft it just came it back is. from outer space all kinds of toxic fumes coming right. out of it the cpus are belching their their exhaust heat yeah. above the rudder am i correct the apus i remember yeah. the night landings and seeing oh you it can on TV see yeah seeing that coming out I love on it. cnn they're going they're not explaining what's going on there are they about to blow up it's you a know? very unique sound too the, what was the sound of it landing go, like go, go, go. i mean the way the uh APUs oh run. the apus yeah. make that sound yeah like a a, a, a pumping Kaboosh, but you didn't kaboosh. hear anything after the solid you know after the boom boom uh the orbiter's pretty quiet well, here's a photograph that Tom UCX sent me and cool. took. All right. Tom was there at the landing with his brother. I asked him to, uh, the UCX brothers were at over 60 shuttle launches and some of the landings doing all of everything from the, the T-38 jets, bringing the yeah. astronauts in at the press conference to the walkout of the ONC or, or operations and checkout. Listen to me, ONC, <laughs> operations and checkout. And I asked Tom, I said, give me your kind of firsthand account about it. And he wrote me this. He said, we didn't do as many landings as launches. Uh, but as I remember, the noise on landing reminded me of a jet landing. Yeah. Uh, you can check with Triple T, but I think the sound of air rushing over the wings and the sound of the APUs is what yeah, we were hearing. That's what, yeah. Because this is a glider. There's no motor uh, actually bringing it in. It's a glider. They had one shot to land it. And, of course, it yeah. always worked out. <laughs> the main difference between night and day landings is the night ones you just caught it in the lights as it crossed the threshold of the runway yeah. and you couldn't get many shots as you could in the daytime uh the light diminished as it moved down the runway and the nose section virtually disappeared yeah and uh <laughs> so uh, appreciate that tom uh for your photo and give us a little insight there because there was uh, how many photographers would have been there? Thirty oh, or forty? Maybe, probably. Uh, yeah. Jean, you we ever photographed the landing? Well, I was still working back there. Yeah, she was working there. Yeah. Which you don't understand about the space shuttle unless you've seen one up close. At least I didn't understand it. Oh, get out of that. Oh, there we go. Up. Oh. <laughs> what did I do there? Uh -oh. No, that's me. Get that out of there. <laughs> okay. Ah, I really messed up. I don't know how to get that behind me off of there, Marty. Uh, that E. <laughs> yep, that was E. Okay, we got. Uh, what I'm trying to emphasize here, building up what Gene did. Right. Uh, they sewed blankets, and you think it's a fuselage like an airplane, and you get up and look at it, and oh my God, it's covered in quilted covered. blankets and stuff. But that was the reentry. Uh, 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 blankets for it there and uh let's let's boost this one up that one's not getting any bigger what did i do oh, we froze up there i'm not going to go too much longer <laughs> all right there you've got a shot of everybody out there with it right okay can i don't we make that one bigger marty can you control yeah, it yeah. okay you did something yeah, yeah I, I did something to disable the uh 
uh, pic but there you see the the bird there coming back right surrounded by all this uh, uh these other pictures there and we're froze up oh no i've done a couple of different things on landing i've had there. the oh there that looks good Uh, and I never did do that. If Jessica, you yeah. helped me with that. Thank you. She probably did. Look at that. That is that cool. big convoy there. Uh, uh, that's the closest that they allow the media yeah. to, obviously. But immediately, a whole convoy of of of, of support vehicles there. Uh, you see the rudder uh, uh, fins are open there a little bit on yeah. the rudder to to slow it down. Speed brakes. That's what they call rudder those. speed brake. And uh, here's a beautiful picture I found cool? of. Uh, Columbia on the runway. Now it's Enterprise on the runway, and and uh, this was not STS seventy three landing. Right. I just thought it was a cool picture, as one landed, one was being uh, 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 ferried off to be uh, refurbished. I think is that right. Columbia being ferried off to have a glass. Yeah, Endeavor. I think that's Endeavor in the in the runway there. This is not STS seventy three that we were talking about. Right today it's a different one you think uh cool picture but anyway uh look at the look at the uh where they get the astronauts out right with the walkway there and the people standing up on the wing in the back too it looks like it but that yellow that you see is actually a work stand they're not standing on the wing but they're on the work stand and we had two trucks called a purge and a, a froze up again on me we had two trucks that drove behind it one of my real jobs early on i was a boom operator on one of those trucks and that was a lot of fun <laughs> cool but uh yeah you had a story about being a boom operator yeah. on that truck. well i'm froze up here uh again uh jessica's on so i think she has control okay jessica i don't know what we did wrong to get out of, of our, <laughs> our mode there uh but i can't minimize that with a th but three button there we go Thank Boom. you, Jessica. Whatever's happened there, I mm -mm -mm. Um, tell us about the truck with the probe on it. Uh, I, I'm attached to the shuttle, and it's a purging cooling. And there's this big rack attached to the rear of the shuttle, and it's got air lines giving it purge. And I've got a boom, and I've got to drive around. I got to follow as we go around corners or whatever. And this one particular day, we'd been out there 14 hours, been a long day. And the uh, move director at the time decided to tell everybody, to uh, all the wing walkers, everybody that's walking, just get inside of a vehicle. And they cranked the speed up a little bit so we could get to the OPF, Orbiter Processing Facility, a little quicker. Yeah. And what happened is one of the gentlemen that had never been in one of the trucks, there's a switch on the dashboard, and he went, what's this do? And turned it, and <laughs> what that did was turn on the, the brakes, emergency brakes for the trailer, so the trailer stopped. Shuttle kept going. It threw me against the panel, really hurt. <laughs> and the truck, no. the shuttle kept going, and everybody had their radios, and they all keyed their radios at the same time to holler stop, so the driver never heard it, and he kept towing the shuttle, so what I did was I lowered the boom as far as it would go, and I watched the lines tighten up <laughs> and I got down behind my little thing there, and I said, "Here it goes, snap, and it." Bow, and it bounced off. It took the whole rack off, and it bounced on the wing, and the Freon is still shooting through it, and it, it hits in the ground, and now the shuttle finally stops. And, I mean, we <laughs> had two hours of incident reports. I think I stayed there 20-something hours that day. Wow. You know, we had to write down everything that happened, and, you know, and it's you never like hear police report. You never hear about stuff like that. No, except <laughs> here on State Curious yeah, with Triple it. T. And tales from the white room. That's we think it. everything just goes smooth as silk and so forth. Not but always. Humans are humans, you're telling me, <laughs> and they it. screw up once in a while? Yeah. So uh, I don't think that guy ever was on another landing. Okay. <laughs> but they would, uh, they, you, uh, you've told me and Marty's told me, you really have to mess up to be fired. Yeah, you do. They would do everything they could to keep you. Yeah. Uh, as part of the team, am I right? They tried. Yeah. yeah. They tried. I know, guys, <laughs> there when, uh, when drugs started you know and they started having 
what do you call it, drug testing. Yeah. We lost a couple of people then. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, but other than that, you, you, you really got it. We had this one guy that I loved. His name was Rusty Jones, but they called him DR. That was his nickname because he got so many discrepancy reports. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> they called him DR. So, huh. Well, that's very interesting. A uh, couple things here uh, about uh, our... our uh, Let's go to the next picture I may have up there. Yeah, this is actually a picture yeah. that Ken Kramer took. Good. Uh, Gene, tell Ken we used one of his beautiful pictures there today. Let me make that a little bigger, Marty. Get to, it's not going bigger. That's one of the boom trucks behind the shuttle. Uh, this is uh, uh, the grooves that are cut on there. Yeah. And this is STS-135, actually, that Ken... Kramer, one of our partners with Gene, right? He got he put the the camera on the on, on the, the tarmac, the, the tarmac there, and these grooves are cut out. That's there. a cool picture. I've had the privilege to be out there one time, and that's that's the surprising thing. Oh yeah, uh, it makes you wonder how fast Bob Seek went in his sports car out there with those <laughs> grooves on there, doesn't yeah. it? So well, it's uh, pretty smooth when you're going, you, but you don't until you're going slow. You don't really feel the the bump bump bump. Yeah, right. And that brings us back to our, our, our beginning there. So cool. uh, uh, very good there. Talking about a different aspect of the shuttle yeah. that you might not think about is that the same crew that launches them yeah. is the same crew that goes out there in the tarmac. This was STS-73 uh, in 1995. So, uh, and uh, we are... Uh, uh, when we landed in California, we'd still go out there too. You would have to California. go out to California, right? Yeah. Did you go out to the White Sands? At the I didn't make it that one. I don't remember what the reason was, but my, uh, the rest of my team went. Uh, I think I was assigned to something else at the time. Okay. But uh, that's the only one I missed was White Sands. I would have liked it too. Well, we appreciate you all being on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and please like, share, subscribe, follow us, tell your friends that we. Uh, we're not trying to be the biggest. Uh, we feel like we're one of the best of, of yeah. giving real uh, s space people to <laughs> talk about and see and, and share their stories. And now we're but, international. Uh, uh, it's all about making <laughs> yeah. Uh Thank you to Jack and Rob here from the Netherlands and Gene Wright's in our studio here. And uh, glad that Steve Izzo's back. He's he's an important docent here at our museum. Yeah. Also an astronomy friend. We're going to start doing some stargazing cool. out in the parking lot starting next week. And uh, did want to mention, uh, don't think I had a slide racked up in there, is that the uh, uh, it's a click. Uh, as far as our astronauts in space on the International Space Station, time is clicking. The hourglass is running out. Yeah. On their spacecraft, Crew Dragon 2 has a 110-day life expectancy, and they are now in their 98th or 95th day or something like that. Monday will be 99 days. I thought it was okay. 200. 200. I'm sorry, two, 199 days. Yes, thank you for correcting me there. It's 210 days certification. Not looking at my notes. So they have they're to looking that. at maybe a Monday splashdown. All right, which would be 199 days. But they're uh, but this is Shane Kimbrough, Megan MacArthur, Megan. European Space Agency's Thomas Piquet, and the Japanese uh, uh, Hishadi uh, have been up there for almost two. Well, it will be almost 200 days. I know Shane pretty good. Do Megan you? a little bit, but I know Shane's good. <clears throat> He's dude. the commander. Yeah. So before they launch Crew Three, which is now targeted for 9:51 p.m. Monday. The undocking of Crew 2 might come as early as 1 o'clock in the afternoon Sunday. This is a wow. very fluid situation. Of course, it's messed up because of the weather here. Here. On our Florida Peninsula, we've got a, a total rainy day for two days, which we don't yeah. see very often. Uh, but uh, it's kind of nice, a nice little uh, autumn rain going on out there, yeah. and it's in the 70s, so we'll take that. But uh, <laughs> that sets up, so the, the scene is this. The crew, too, may be ordered home as early as Sunday to undock. And that decision will be made, obviously, within the next 24 hours. Their splashdown would be off the Florida coast sometime Monday, maybe before dawn. Uh, they're not saying about that. And then Crew 3 is not going to launch before Monday at 9.51. But if they bring Crew 2 back early, they're saying that would mess up the direct handover and they may have to spend a couple extra days on Earth to, to write up some more procedures uh, in there. Well, yeah. 
and there, it's all about being safe and sorry, and it's not about the vehicle. We had delay because one of the four uh, future astronauts had some sort of medical issue that yeah. they're not going to divulge. And, no. of course, that's everybody's private business. Uh, I wonder if the – I think Mashburn was out there taking litter off of the uh, – I saw that. Is, uh, I saw hope he that. didn't cut his, his foot on a <laughs> tin can or something out there. I saw uh, that. But we'll find all that out later uh, when we go there. So, Triple T, it's been so yes, glad sir. having you here. We want to mention one thing that an astronaut that you put in her chair one time, Nicole Stott, yeah. Earthling Nicole Stott, yeah. is going to be here November 20th. She's going to be signing her new book, Back to Earth. This is a lesson plan of, of a global... Uh, survival basically uh, i've been reading about halfway through nicole her future is she's a wonderful person was a great astronaut took yeah watercolors to space and now as an artist is art space and healing particularly looking at our young people but for all of us out there she her message is we are all earthlings we are all on a planet called earth and the only border that matters is the thin blue line that keeps us alive and that thin blue line by the way next trip to walmart that's about how far probably the thin blue line is for you because mm -hmm. it's about five miles of actual livable space seven miles at mount everest you can't breathe up there right. though we say 20 miles is our atmospheric uh, layer that sustains us so you're going to learn a lot from nicole stott a great partner of our museum and she's going to be here 10 to 2 at our museum on November 20th. Can't wait to see uh, her. We know she was here at the Space Coast and, and autographed a lot of books. So if you didn't get a picture with her, come back. Uh, and then she's going to be on Stay Curious at 3 o'clock. Cool. And uh, we're told that Bob Seek will probably be here. He launched a few shuttles. And yeah. Few. Mike Leinbach. And you'll be here. Yeah, at three cool, cool, so, cool. Yeah. Uh, we're going to have a big old warm, fuzzy day here. Uh, Good. with Nicole Stott, and you will enjoy her as we do at the American Space Museum for all she does. Um, uh, I told Karen today, our executive director, I said, my first question to Nicole Stott is going to be, it must be good to be you. <laughs> because uh, she's still very, fairly young and uh, uh, yeah. is doing a lot of things to, to, to promote uh, good this thing. spaceship Earth and that we are crewmates, not passengers on spaceship Earth. So, yeah. Well, another Stay Curious with Triple Good job. T. Uh, and welcome episode. back, Mark. We're glad to have you back. Me and Jessica had fun, but we're glad right. to have you I back. I was away having a grand, my first grandbaby last week. Yeah. You all did great. Marty did great behind the scenes here. Yeah. Jessica, thank you for busting in there remote to uh, uh, get my fat fingers straightened <laughs> out there from hitting the buttons. Jack and Rob, you guys come back. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Always great to see Gene. And uh, on behalf of our whole museum... What do we say? Come, Come to bridge. our museum so we can bridge, bridge the, the space, space between, between us. us. Come see me.